They got a lock on us. Engine's been hit. Get us out of here. I'm losing control. <laughs> Welcome to the next generation of open world adventure. Immerse yourself in Cyberpunk 2077. I completely beat the game, and it was a challenge to the least. This review will be spoiler free and yes I'll talk about the crazy bugs I had to fight with. Before I start the review, I must say this ahead of time. I still like the game, but it's inexcusable buggy launch shady business tactics, and finally lying about everything. I blame CDPR management than the dev team. Note, I played Cyberpunk 2077 on a base PS4 console. Quick summary, Cyberpunk 2077 is science fiction in a dystopian futuristic setting. Big new corporation pretty much rules the lawless city known as Night City. We follow the character V. V is a mercenary trying to be a living legend in Night City. In V's journey is really the battle of one, man, woman, soul and the price to be a legend. Good. 1. The voice acting really does a nice job. Automatically, Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand, pretty much steals the show easily. The MC voice actors are no slouch by any means. V's male Gavin Ray and female Trami Lee do an amazing job expressing V's tough guy act and weak state of mind act. The supporting cast flushes out the Night City backstory. 2. Jackie Wells played by Morris Lamarco is by far a more interesting character than V. We don't spend much time with Jackie, but once Jackie hoops on the screen, he captures your broad attention. Jackie's energy and charisma institute the game a little upbeat at times. However, the real perk behind Jackie consists of the people who recognize him best. I won't state what happens to him, but you'll witness the display in the game. 3. The side quest that deals with a personal quest from these friends are more interesting than the main arc of the game. The personal side quest performs is a complex story behind some of V's friends and the strangers he or she runs into. The writing for the side quests that are related to unique characters goes into a lot of taboo subjects. There will be times you'll have to think about the actions you have done for said character. 4. Upgrading your character and getting gear is extremely fun to do. V's skill tree is relatively deep with a side complex system. It's a bit underwhelming at first glance, but you'll get the hang of it once you dump a couple of hours in the game. Creating your build or using another player's build you can find online. Becoming a Cyborg Rambo, Melee Terminator, the list just goes on. This leads into the weapons and armor you'll find. The most reliable weapon you should really care about is tech weapons because the tech weapons can shoot through the walls and other concrete surfaces. Plus, the pistol and sniper weapons are the best in the game. 5. The writing for the particular plot endures an enjoyable ride of emotions. It's considerably more momentary than the Witcher series, but that's a pleasing thing. Enjoying a brief but tighter story can really do wonders folks. The pacing of the story neatly flows, but Act 2 can drag on. However, Acts 1 and 3 will keep the story moving. The ending of Cyberpunk 2077 was enough to keep me happy. Bad. 1. The technical issues allegedly hold this game badly. I ran frantically into an odd bunch of crashes and game-breaking bugs. CDPR should have let this game cook a little more. The game will allegedly crash on the important story missions. At that moment you'll rely completely on the checkpoint system, but the checkpoint system is useless. The checkpoints knocks you further behind the game's progression. On my worst playtime, I ran aimlessly into two to three crashes. 2. The loading time and bugs that ruin the game. 
It's rare, but the bugs that freeze on you. For example, key characters won't move to an accurate location. Therefore, you need to reload the game at least two times. The loading wouldn't represent the issue if the game didn't freeze on me. The time for loading the screen is over will be the time you'll stop playing it. 3. The gameplay feels a bit outdated at times. Engaging enemies can be stale at times. The enemies AI along with pedestrians are dull as a box of potatoes. On that occasion, hacking and stealth are very generic. It's generic because it's all pointless and slows the gameplay down. Mowing the enemies is more fun to do than hacking them or stealth takedowns. You gain no rewards for going full on stealth mode personally. 4. Driving in this game is a living nightmare. The controls feel like you're driving a tank that spins out so easily and turning corners is like ice skating on drugs. If you take part in any racing event you'll discover all the flaws in this game in one stupid race. I'll depart from there. 5. The choices in this game are solely like The Witcher 3. All the life-changing choices are built on selecting the appropriate choice of words to make X person to progressive. It's copy and paste series choices. I personally dislike that mess. Your action is taking over by silly sweet talk nonsense. 6. Poor optimization just like Witcher 3. It's remarkable people forgot that at launch Witcher 3 had similar issues, but nobody including myself didn't utter a word. Our standards at the time were modest. The Witcher made other RPGs like Skyrim look like a joke. In reality, Witcher 3 was a janky mess on consoles PS4 and Xbox One. Score, Rental. Overall, I did enjoy Cyberpunk 2077 and I don't regret buying it. The game has good voice acting, Kino steals the show. The personal side quest along with the particular plot is enormously enjoyable. The writing for Jackie Well and his mark on Night City residents remain impressive stuff. Upgrading your character and getting tech weapons is awesome to do down the line. However, the game plague with a lot of bugs, nonsense sweet talking like The Witcher 3. The driving is god awful, and the AI makes a box of potatoes look smart. I do believe the game will get better over time, but as it stands folks. I'll say to wait until CDPR fixes most of the bugs. Cyberpunk is a much better than Fallout 76 and Anthem in my personal opinion. Lastly, the scumbag way to lie to the public via hiding gameplay on base consoles. Then manipulating the reviews by making them play the game on PC. Strict guidelines for sharing gameplay videos. Non-stop of lying and giving their dev team a hard time blaming everybody for Cyberpunk 2077 issues. The management team aka the higher ups really screw the game's potential up.